On today's show, I'm going to give you my personal testimony and all the details of it. I was a leader in the new age. I was totally deceived in many ways, not even knowing that I was deceived until miraculously I had an open vision and I be then became a believer. And the interesting thing is on this show, I want to really go deep into that whole area of how sometimes when we're deceived, we don't even know it. And I'm going to show you how to become aware of that. So stay tuned. Did you know that there is a world beyond what you can see with your physical eyes? How can you know what comes from the light versus the darkness? Alan Strudwick wants to help you discern God's truth from the dangers of false religion, false teachers, pseudoscience philosophies, and demonic influences waiting to deceive even the very elite. And now, here's your host of The Truth Project, Alan Strudwick. Welcome to this show, The Truth Project. I'm really passionate about this subject. It's about my life. It's about truth. Um, it's about exposing deception. And I want to spend as much time as I can to explain to you from a personal experience. Just to let you know, why is it called The Truth Project? Well, there's a scripture in John 8, 32, and it says, so you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. And that scripture completely applies to my life. So I'm just going to spend a moment and tell you a little bit about the miraculous thing that happened to me in my life. But first of all, I did not grow up in a Christian church. I did not grow up in believing anything about um, Jesus or anything else as a personal Lord. What I grew up in was called the New Age, the cult. What happened is that when I was 13 years old, my father was very wealthy and decided to move us when we were younger kids to Australia. He wanted to make more money and Australia was the place to go to. So we left our hometown and home country of Canada and went to Australia. Now, as I said, when I was 13, my father with a lot of money, he was totally into um, spiritualism, nothing in any way in a normal way, but more in kind of the occultish type way. And he remarried. And after he divorced my mother, he remarried a woman who was totally into the same thing, into that spiritualism. I moved in with my father. And so then when I moved in at 13, my father, because he had so much money, he would invite leaders, gurus, those types of people into our home and also to run conferences and seminars. So I, at an early age, got to be around these high up spiritual leaders with all of their wisdom and all of their teaching. And I was hungry for that because I'd had another experience when I was younger at 11, where I had blacked out on the schoolyard. And when I awoke, I had actually been into the future. I'd gone into a vision of seeing the future and living in the future so much so that when I came back and woke up in the school playground, I actually felt like I had come back into the past, kind of like a movie scene where, you know, I'd been into the future and now I'd lived there and now I'd come back. And um, so because of that experience, I knew there was more than just uh, my day to day life and going to school. And even at that young age, I started to search things. So when my father would bring these people into um, the living room and teach us after conferences, I got very excited because they they did spiritual things and they could perform spiritual um, almost like miracles and different and the wisdom they had, it would resonate with me. Now, look, I admit back then I was deceived, but I didn't know that I was hungry for something at a young age. And one of the one of the other things my father would do is he was connected to um, Hindu gurus and people that were like that in the sense of being an initiate underneath the guru so you could spiritually advance because that's what Hinduism is. They believe that you come back lifetime after lifetime after lifetime and they believe that you can actually evolve spiritually. Very different to believing in Jesus. But that's what where we were at. I knew nothing about church. I knew nothing about um, God. I knew nothing in any way that, that had anything to do with the Christian faith. And so what I did is that I was interested with one certain guru. He, he had this wisdom that I felt a connection with. And what happened is that he came to my parents and he asked, would I be allowed to become an initiate underneath this guru? 
Now, the interesting thing is, is that to become an initiate, you have to uh, evoke in the Hindu God into your body through a spiritual practice. And so I went through that several times, year after year after year, as I was growing up as a teenager. And so I was yoked to this guru, to all of these Hindu gods, and I would do two hours of spiritual exercises and meditation every day in dedication to those Hindu gods under the belief that what I was doing was evolving spiritually so that I could get to the point where I actually, when I would physically die, I would not need to come back to earth. I actually could continue into the spiritual realms and live up towards Nirvana because that's part of the Hinduistic belief. So I was doing this all through my teenage years, very young, but learning as much as I could. And then in my early 20s, I went to America. And what, the reason I went there is that my guru set up a whole organization and they, they got involved in universities and hospitals and anywhere they could in the spheres of life to spread this type of belief system. And so what they did is they saw that I, my guru would say that I was very evolved. In fact, part of the belief system of Hinduism is that um, if you are a, a Christian, your soul has only been here one lifetime. One lifetime. So you're not very spiritually evolved, they would say. I was told by my guru that I had been here over 300,000 lifetimes. Now, that's a long time. I understand that. But that's the deception. It, it works on ego. It works on, on kind of your own pride and your own self. And so when I was in my 20s, the guru asked, would I become uh, a teacher of, of their philosophies? Could I become and then eventually a leader into the inner circle that he would have around him? And of course, that's something that at that stage, even though I was under deception, that's exactly what I wanted to do at that time. So then they decided to train me in every spiritual practice that existed, every type of energy thing to, to different types of meditation, yoga. I was a Hatha yoga master. I mean, so many things in the spiritualism that was around in those early 80s and 90s is that was things that I was taught on. In fact, I actually, as I said, some of them I became a master in I, because that's what I was um, dedicated to. I want my whole aim, just so you know my heart, my whole aim in those years was to change people's lives to the better. So I thought. I thought that I was bringing revelation. I was bringing wisdom. I was bringing um, spiritual exercises and practices to people and experiences so that they could get become more evolved. So they also could evolve in their soul so they never have to come back to this planet again. In fact, most of us wanted to just go straight to a to a nirvana or a heaven. We, we looked at the world as being almost false. And that's how we were deceived. And so the whole part of what of all my learning primarily was so that I could start to teach, which eventually I did. I started to teach seminars around the world. I would teach in um, all sorts of avenues and conferences. I taught spiritual retreats. I would work with people individually. I would work spiritually with them. Um, I'm, I'm a level headed guy. I feel like I'm a quite a healthy skeptic, but I ended up being totally deceived. And that's the thing that I want to be able to do with these shows is to be able to expose a lot of what's happening so that you also don't get caught up in that. So then I was doing that right through my whole 20s. And then as I was approaching my um, around 30 years of age, I was noticing some things in the seminars and some of the spiritual retreats not really working. Some of the results were that um, there would be people that would end up in mental institutions and their family would call me and blame me and work against me um, about that. Then there would be times I'd find that um, Certain people were ending up with splitting from their marriages or leaving their children because they believed it was the higher spiritual thing they were to do. In other words, I started to see people ignore other people and be more focused on themselves. And so they would make decisions that would destroy the marriages, destroy their family, destroy even their own life. Yet in this, in the, under the deception of that it was going to make a better life. So as I saw some of these things, it, it disrupted my heart. It upset me. So I wanted an answer. So I decided that I would go and visit my guru and ask him about these problems that were happening. And so when I went to my guru, interesting thing is I went to him and I explained all these things that were happening to these people. And it's not what my heart was about. I, I thought we were about spreading peace on the planet and trying to bring in 
uh, a whole new system in the world of how people could follow this new nirvana and get to that. And the interesting thing is this was his answer. His answer was the reason these people were suffering and the reason these people were having those experiences and the reason these people were ending up with mental diseases and all sorts of things from our seminars, from the things that we were teaching. He said because their spiritual energy was not high enough to receive what we were doing because what we were doing was very high. Now, on one sense, when you're deceived, you, you take that as being truth. But it never sat right in my heart. And at that point, I, not knowing anything about anything religious, I cried out to a God. Is there a personal God? If there's not a personal God, but I cried out and said, I need help. I think I might have even used the word to the universe because that's the word level that we would use. And I said, I need to I need to have an answer to this because this does not work for me. And so what I did is after that, I was about to run a personal development seminar on leadership. And in that seminar, I decided to fill out on a form. I was the facilitator of the seminar, but the, the participants would actually ask if they could have anything in their world, what would they want? And I actually wrote down, I'd like to have a personal relationship with one of these gods. I mean, I had spiritual beings would visit me and give me wisdom and all that sort of thing, but I wanted a personal experience. Now, in that seminar, I had, when I was doing a what's called a guided imagery, I had an open vision. And in that open vision, I was in a cave and I looked and I saw, I don't know why I knew, but I knew that that vision right in front of me was God, was Almighty God right there. And the interesting thing is then on his right hand side, his right hand side, I saw a figure there that I just knew that that would have been Jesus. And then then all of a sudden, Jesus then said to me, put out my hands. And so I put out my hands and he said, no longer will you heal for the devil. You will now heal for me. I didn't even believe in a devil. And all of a sudden, these light beams went shooting into my hands. And, um, and then he started to say things about my life, my future, what I was going to be doing. It was all weird to me because I had no experience of anything in any way to do with Jesus, let alone God. But then when the vision finished, I ended up in a, um, a church and I went to a church. Now, this is what I thought I'd be doing when I went to this church. I thought that when I got there, what the universe was going to be doing was at some point inviting me up front so that I could talk to all these Christians and I could change their life away from Christianity and move into the spiritualism that I was. Because remember, we believed that many lifetimes it took to become spiritually evolved. So that's exactly what I thought would happen. I thought that I would be the one that would help save all these Christians and help get them um, into a higher realm of spiritual intensity. And so when we come back, what I'm wanting to do is share to you specifically what really happened and what God really had intended in that church service. We'll be back with more of The Truth Project in just one moment. Did you know that there has been a 30-year top secret plan conceived by Far Eastern gurus? This plan has been deceptively hidden in the New Age religion to try and convert Christians and Jews in the West to embrace the false gods of Hinduism and Buddhism. Over two decades ago, Alan Strudwick was chosen as a child to be trained by leading gurus in the Hindu religion, whose mission was to infiltrate the church and convert Christians into Eastern religions. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. In this book, Alan retells his life journey of deep entanglement with the New Age beliefs and practices that ends when he has a miraculous encounter with God the Father and Jesus. Understand how to avoid the dangers of the New Age, Hatha Yoga, Eastern Meditation, Astrology, Reincarnation, Aura Cleansing, Astral Travel, Psychic and Palm Readings, Tarot Cards, Reiki Healing, and so much more. Understand how Christians flirting with New Age practices are committing the sin of spiritual adultery. Understand that yoga is a demonic gateway opening doors for spiritual attacks. Discover how to avoid being deceived by demons that pose as angels of light. Go to Amazon or log on to Alan's website, alanstrudwickministries.com to get Alan Strudwick's eye-opening book, Authentic Awakening. As I was saying in the last section, 
about this urge to go to a church and then I was going to actually feel like I was going to get drawn by the universe up onto the stage and then start to teach these Christians how they were backward and they didn't know what was going on spiritually and how I was much more evolved and that I would actually get to teach them. Well, that's not what happened. What actually happened in reality is I, when I arrived at this church, and that was um, an interesting thing in its first time because I'd never been in a church ever before in my life, but I was, I was late, so I was uh, and like taken up to the second or third row. And when I was sitting there, I was constantly kind of like, you know, not chanting, but in, internally doing things and just waiting and waiting and thinking, when's the universe going to shift and get me up there? And um, what happened, though, is while I was sitting there waiting, the guy that was talking, the pre preacher, was talking about Jesus and was talking about how Jesus had said that if you take it, he was reading scripture and said that if, if Jesus had said, if you take my yoke, then your life will be easy and your burden will be light. And, um, and as I was listening to that, I was like, well, that's pretty different because all of the Hindu gods that I had yoked with, because that's a Hindu term, all of them that I had actually yoked with actually made my life harder so I could do what they call clearing karma, which I'll go into greater depth in one of the other shows about that. But then it's interesting that I'm here hearing this other Lord, Jesus, talking about yoke being easy and my life had not been easy. So I'm, I'm a healthy skeptic. I like checking things out and researching. I don't always just want to believe everybody. So what I did is that um, he, the, the preacher at some point towards the end said, if you'd like to invite this Lord Jesus into your life and then check out whether his yoke and his burdens light and then life would be better, then you can do that. So I thought, well, why not? I already had about 14 of these Hindu lords inside of me. What's wrong with putting another one in there? And I know some of you might think that's a little strange, but that's where I was at at the time spiritually. So I went out front and I prayed. And when I prayed, something happened to me spiritually. I knew about spiritual experiences. I'd experienced them all my life. And I had a spiritual experience in this era. I just felt like something like almost like shifted, went from one way to another way. That's all I could describe it, but it was very strong and very intense. In fact, I even think my legs were a little wobbly at the time. But at that time, I, I went, okay, so there's something happening here. There's something happening in the, in the spirit, but I don't know what that is. So what I ended up doing was I thought, well, I want to I want to find out things. As I mentioned, I'm a healthy skeptic. So I went to my mother and I knew that she being you know, a believer that she would have a Bible. So I she gave me this Bible and I made a decision that for 12 months to you, I had already all my life followed the wisdom of these other Hindu lords. So here I had 12 months, I would say, that I decided to commit to checking out if this Jesus really is the Lord he says he is. And so instead of in, in that 12 months, instead of inviting or asking answers of the Hindu lords I had inside me, what I would do is I would find out what Jesus would say. So I'd look up the Bible. For example, when I was sick and the Bible would say, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So I would lay hands on myself and I'd miraculously, not like over a few days, miraculously on the spot be healed. There was times when I, I remember I blew my knee out. Same thing happened. There was times financially I was in trouble. And the same thing happened. I started experiencing miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle by following the directions that I could find in the Bible or asking him personally, this Lord Jesus, what? And his yoke definitely was easy for me. His burden was light. So at the end of the 12 months, I went, OK, I'm going to now go and visit my guru because my guru needs to know this is what my experience is now. Our belief system when I was in the new age is that there's many roads lead to God, many pathways. It doesn't matter which one you follow. Well, so because that was my belief system, I made the decision that I go and tell my guru that even though I had these other lords that he would put in me, this other Lord called Jesus actually was better. It doesn't I wasn't at that time trying to make anything wrong. I knew nothing much else at all in my life, except this one was definitely working better. So I go to my guru. And I started telling him about this Lord Jesus and I tell him about the miracles and telling him about this and telling him about all the joy I was getting and different things like that. Like, for example, I even told him about there was one time I went into an ashram and instead of chanting my Hindu gods, I chanted the, the name of Jesus. 
And it was so interesting that I just burst out laughing uncontrollable to the point that they threw me out of the ashram because it was too noisy because I was laughing. I was full of joy. I'm telling my guru this. While I was telling him, all of a sudden, I, and I'd never seen it before, was like um, his whole face changed, his whole countenance changed. Everything changed to the point that he looked, he actually looked evil. He looked like um, those, those um, what would you say, those walking dead in those movies, not that I've watched them, but that type of thing, almost like a zombie, just completely evil. And, and, and he started to scream at me, yell at me, he threw me out of, the, out of the place. And then from that point on, he excommunicated, he faxed all around the world to every organization I was involved in, I was um, with or whatever. He threw me out of the whole movement, de-initiated the whole bit, just threw me right out. So it was interesting because then at that point, I realized there must be something wrong with what I had been believing for so long. There must be a deception. There must be something in that area. And I didn't know anyone to go to, so I wasn't quite sure what to do. But I decided that I'd go back to that church that I went to because maybe they can give me answers. And slowly they did. And over the next two or three years, they started to show me things in the Bible. They showed me where there was actually deception um, that had come from the devil in my life, that I actually had gifts from God that had been taken away and deceived to keep me away from doing God's work. And then from that day to now, I've continued to do God's work, continued to share and that's the main thing about the Truth Project for me on my heart is to be able to now start to show you from my credentials, from the fact that I've worked for the enemy and I've worked for God. I've, I know the enemy's ways. I want to not only expose the enemy and his deceptive ways, but I also want to equip you of how to discern and how to spiritually stay strong to have the fulfillment of God's promises. See, I've lived a life, people go, oh, but you, you can't say that, but I can. I've lived a life that's fairy tales. I, I still have things that happened to me in my life. I've still had tragedies, but God has brought me through every single one of them. He's given me victory. And I know it's because I've lived in the enemy's camp and I know the difference between that and this. I know the difference between man's wisdom and God's wisdom. And I've lived my life dedicated to God's wisdom and to His ways. So truth is a, is a, <laughs> it's a very passionate thing to me, truth. And truth isn't just the absence of darkness or absence of deception. Truth is actually living and moving forward towards the things that will set you free, as I said in that scripture before. I've got another scripture here that the Lord gave me straight after within probably three or four months of me then going, okay, I'm going to live this life as a believer. And it's in John 16, it's verses 13 and 14. However, when he, and this is Jesus talking, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority at all, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come and he will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. That when, when I was given that scripture, I'd realized that I needed to know the spirit of truth. And that's what I had discovered in a, in a deceptive way, but I had discovered it. I'm so glad that God visited me, someone who actually hated him. I even was in secret meetings because I was so high up in the new age. I was in secret meetings where we discussed several things. One, how could we create a new world order? Different leaders from around the world were in these meetings and we were part of the spiritual part of that. How can we create a new world order? How can we actually create a, a one world religion? How can we decrease Christianity? How can we decrease believers in Jesus? How can we decrease even the power of Jesus? They were the things that we were wanting. And so as a person in the new age, as a leader, that's what I did. I constantly brought Christians away because I thought they were being deceived. So I would bring them away. I would steal them. So how powerful and merciful is God that he would come to me, someone who hated him, someone who was against him and someone who took his believers away from him. Why would he come and rescue me? But that's exactly what his heart is like. That's exactly what he's like. We are in the midnight hour. We are in a season right now where we need to have the spirit of truth in our lives. We need to be able to know who is talking to us, who is giving us things. We, we need to know that. And so that's my aim. That's my heartfelt aim is to be able to move into those other areas. And that scripture is quite a powerful scripture. 
Um, as I said, we are in a critical hour in world history. I'm looking at it everywhere. You'd be surprised how many people now contact me because of where I am in my ministry and where I was who are asking me questions. I'm getting hundreds of emails every week. What about this practice? What about this practice? Is this demonic? Is this demonic? Is this, can I do this? Can I not do that? Now, I never used to get those emails before. I know why, because people are in a season now, especially because of what had happened around the world with um, COVID, but people are in a, seri- a season now where they're like, they're starting to question things. They're starting to, to want that life that God has promised, but they're not seeing ways to do that. So I want to be able to help as well is to be able to expose what are the works of the enemy? What is coming into um, God's church these days? What is it there? And so I, my belief is that with the Truth Project, and that's why it was named that, that I'm going to show you truth and bring truth as someone, as I said, is credentialed on both sides. And we need to recognize that voice of truth when it comes. We need to follow God's voice uh, because God's voice not only helps us eternally, but also here in this life. Uh, some of the emails that I get from people, they, they, they're anxious or they're depressed or they're this. And then I start asking some questions because I, I haven't been given an authority as a psychologist or as a psychiatrist or as a counselor. I've been given a position of authority in the spiritual realm. I know I have authority over deception. So not only will I be um, praying uh, and I'll do that in a second, but praying for you, but on every show, I will stand in that authority to be able to expose things so that you can be set free and then live the victorious life. So right now, if you've been listening to some of the words that I've been even saying and something's triggered in your heart, I just want to quickly pray for you right now. If in any way, just repeat after me, Father, if there's any practice that I have delved into that is that I didn't wasn't aware of. Father, please just forgive me. Father, show me the truth. Show me the spirit of truth. And Father, show me how I can be set free. Show me how I can renounce and denounce any of the practices I've done and move forward into knowing you, Lord, more and more. And Father, I just pray as well upon everyone listening that there be an anointing on the words that I say that will cut to people's hearts, that there will be a renewal of their mind as we go through the shows. And that more importantly, Father, that if they are not believers, that now they'll start to hear things and have a chance to become a believer by asking, just like I did, the Lord Jesus into their heart. Amen. And we'll see you next week on The Truth Project. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com to connect with Alan, get questions answered, and submit your prayer requests. Download the ministry app and let Alan equip you and inspire you wherever you are. Find great teaching throughout his CDs, books, eBooks you can download, and more. And be informed with timely ministry, updates, and exciting interviews. Log on to alanstrudwickministries.com.